only met with the architect and designed all the other Attention, please. Attention, please. It is time to sign the security list. If you wish to work in the building over the weekend, you must sign the security list. This is the first and last call for the security list. That is all. Why did you come here? Well, because it was cheap. <laughs> How, what was tuition when you got here? Well, tuition was about 300 bucks a year. For how many units? It was $9 a unit. That's 32 units. $9 a unit plus the uh, various fees and so on. It came to about 300 bucks a year. A year! <laughs> now you pay that for one unit. More. So, uh... I looked around, I was ready to go to college, and uh, back uh, at that time, everybody's going Ivy League or uh, University of Michigan, Ohio State, something like that. But it was expensive. So I looked around, I found USC. I remembered USC, because I came out here in 1936 on a bus trip by myself. Cost me $36 round trip. <laughs> and I came out here on this bus trip, and I looked around, I saw SC, and I said, it looked pretty good. And I found this, they offered the cinematography, and I was kind of interested in uh, motion pictures. I had a little camera, 16 millimeter, that I bought for $12.50, used. And I'd been using that for a few years, and I had a little 35 millimeter toy projector I've been using for a few years and uh, I used to we used to buy I don't know where this guy got it but he had reels and reels and reels of old features and he'd sell us stuff at a hundred feet of crack measured out with a yardstick and of course it was nitrate and we didn't know anything about that in those days I had an attic full of nitrate film. It could have burned oh, that house down. <laughs> I still worry about it. You mean it's still but, there? Uh, <laughs> it's still there. <laughs> I don't know what happened to it, but it's still there. And uh, so I'm looking around for a college, and SC looked pretty good because out in California it was nice and sunny, and living was easy and uh, cheap. <laughs> So I said, well, I'll go here. So I applied, and they accepted me, and I came out on the train. And the first guys I met were these two guys <laughs> who, who went, went to school, went to high school, about 20 miles from my home. And we've been friends ever since. We heard a lot about the Department of Cinematography at USC, and we shared a ride in a 1931 Dodge Coupe out to Los Angeles. We arrived there on September 8th, 1938. The first day we arrived on this camp, who do you suppose we met with Dave, and I think he was a psychology major. The academy was formed in 1927. They figured that they ought to do something right away. Sound was just coming into motion pictures, and they were panicking in the studios. And they came down to the university and contacted von Kleinschmidt. And of course, Rufus was uh, eager to make connections with the motion picture industry. They set up a whole curriculum. They published a brochure. Now, how did that tie into this series, the introduction of the photo play? That, not at all. How does that relate to this? Not, not at all. Not at all. That was no connection whatsoever. The introduction to the photo play, there was a department set up in 1929 called Photo Play, consisting of the famous Class 50 Introduction to the Photo Play, plus another course called Introduction to Motion Picture Production, taught by Florence Hubbard of the English Department. They published this elaborate brochure, brochure with all, the book with all these the little book, pictures right? of these mm -hmm. famous guys in Hollywood. Well, from what I've been able to determine from the Daily Trojan and so on, very few of those guys ever showed up. <laughs> Back in the late 30s, when we were working on the newsreel, Herbie became uh, chief photographer 
he had a camera. We used to develop the titles, I remember that. In the bathtub we'd shoot the, or something. We'd shoot the titles on positive stock, and we even toned them. I remember doing that. Yeah. And fades with dyes. We'd them in the bathtub and string them all over the apartment to dry the night before the showing. Because in 1939, summer 1939, we moved into the uh, the old building, what we called the old right. building, which was uh, the old fine arts building built in 1924 out of scrap lumber. <laughs> and uh, we remodeled that place, de redesigned, remodeled, built a a uh, projection room, build a stage, build a studio, built the classrooms, everything. And we kind of felt that the department was ours. <laughs> was it Dave usually was the production manager on these staff units, and we were very limited in what we could eat, <laughs> drink, <laughs> and whatever else, uh, you know, we uh, needed to exist on. Uh, of course, Dave Johnson was... Uh, the old curmudgeon. He wasn't always old, believe it or not, but he was always a curmudgeon. He always was Dr. No. He always said no to everything. said film is time. What time is it anyway? Look, if a former student comes to us for advice, to screen something for our feedback, it's going to be personal treatment. That's the least we can do in our profession. Profession? Jeez, I work at home. I come here to screw around. <laughs> well, I remember that first editing class I taught, teaching from, uh, from Mel's outline. And I was scared to death. I was up there scared to death. And uh, I was scared to death. I'd never taught anything before. I'd never done anything like that in my life. And I was scared to death. But somehow I made it through. And next time it was a little easier. And uh, finally made it through the semester. Somehow I made it through. Finally made it through the semester. Ninety years ago, I wanted to make a, a movie about my teachers when I was at USC Cinema, and so I, I did an animated film. And, and right from the beginning, it was clear that who the star had to be. There was one teacher above all who had the kind of star quality, I think, to carry the film. And that was uh, Dave Johnson, who I have right here, um, and he was well known for always saying, "It's your movie," and this was the one time that he could probably say that it was his movie. He, he really carried the show. He was definitely the star. Although, I think that Mel would probably disagree, think maybe he was carrying the show, but, but honestly, I think it was, it was Dave all along. Um, and the nice thing about having this now is that I can make him say anything I want. I can make him say, your 480 proposal has been accepted. So, Dave was well known for saying, it's your movie, and never make a kid, never make a movie with kids or dogs. Well, I met Dave Johnson in 1980, and I had him for post-production management for the 480 class. 
And there's two things I remember about him distinctly. One is that um, he would always tell me no, whatever I asked him. Whatever idea I came up with, Dave would always say no and make me figure out another way to do it. And um, he was always right. I always came up with a more practical way. And even he'd always say no to the more practical way, but still we'd have to do it that way and it would work out. And the other thing I distinctly remember about him is that one day I was mouthing off about something in class and he leaned across the podium and he said to me, Kiki, just remember, nobody likes a loud mouth broad. And um, in some cases he was very right. So that's what I remember about David. I miss him very much. And um, he was a big influence on me. And uh, I know he's a big influence on a lot of other people too. Dave Johnson is, is like the the, the great uncle of the department. He was the one that everybody went to when they had a problem. He was the one that was, the professor was completely unflappable. He was very, uh, uh, I don't know, he put everything in perspective and was a common influence around a lot of excited students. Um, I think the most interesting thing about Dave was we'd have our 480 projects, and the students would have to get up and explain why the film didn't work and why it looked so terrible and everything, and they'd say, well, the, the star was caught on a bus and the camera fell in the water and, the, you know, uh, it rained that day and nobody expected it, and um, the director broke his leg, and, and Dave would always say, well, why don't you put that on a title card at the head of the movie, and it'll tell everybody why. It doesn't work, and the class would all laugh, and, and it really managed to put everything in, in perspective, I think, and uh, uh, show kids that there really weren't any excuses, that everybody was doing the impossible every day, and that it was routine, and you had to be calm about it, and you had to overcome it somehow, which is what uh, Dave always seemed to do.